Okay, this is Tom Minton with John Chris Volushi. We're going to be looking at Mighty's Benefit Plan, which is um, one of the better-known episodes of um, Mighty Mouse and New Adventures from 1987. The, uh, the origin of this story is, uh, you might think it's merely a parody of Alvin and the Chipmunks, but it's more than that. Um, Ralph, Tom, me, Lynn Naylor, and Bob Jakes we're doing uh, some development on a show called Ralph Playhole, and we were doing it uh, in a building owned by Steve Hahn. Yeah, Korean. Who, was, who yes. was producing the Chipmunk Adventure movie. Yes. And the Chipmunks, the original Chipmunks were created by Ross Bagdasarian in 1960 or so. Yeah. Or maybe earlier, but the earlier. cartoon was in 1960. Yeah. And it was, it was a really funny cartoon. 61. I loved it when I was a kid. Watched it a million times. But there was an 80s version of it made by his son. At Ruby Spears. At Ruby Spears. I boarded. I boarded on that thing. Oh, you did? Oh, my God, yes. And they were making a movie based on the new version of Alvin and the Chipmunks. And the new version of Alvin and the Chipmunks was sort of like the realistic version. It was, it was, they were trying as hard as hell to make it not cartoony, to try and explain why a grown man would hang out with has four-foot-tall chipmunks living in his house who wear clothes and lust after fem- human girls. Yeah, which, sure. I, which I, we thought was bizarre. It, it ruined the whole idea of... Uh, oh, what, Twitch and Rise. these backgrounds here? This is the first time you saw this kind of retro, wonky backgrounds in uh, television cartoons, which now is the style on almost every cartoon. But the, the actual uh, story of the video right here is, is kind of a takeoff on the uh, Chipmunk Adventure movie. They go around the world in the movie. And so we, we did it all in this one long pan here that uh, I think Ken Boyer drew it. Yeah. Uh, these are Lynn Naylor layouts. Lynn Naylor's really great at drawing girls. That's Janelle Pransky, who was... Uh, Associate producer or something. Ralph's uh, secretary. Assistant. Yeah, that's what she was. This is Lynn Naylor stuff. Lynn, Lynn is really great at drawing girls. It's hard to draw girls and make them... Yeah, look at this. Yeah. We were working for Ralph in the same building where the Bagdasarians were making the Chipmunk Adventure movie, and we were watching all these events going on, and there was a rivalry between Ralph and the Bagdasarians. So we remembered all the stories that went on. Like, for one thing, they, they had this dog named Tiger Lily. Mm. Tiger Lily got run over in the middle of the uh, production. Right in the middle of the street. After crapping all over our office, Ralph came back after directing the Harlem Shuffle in New York and saw all this dog crap all over his office. And Ralph said, what the hell's all this? And we said, well, it's the, the Bagdasarian's dog comes in here every day. And these were like little tiny craps, right? Because it was a Pekingese. And he, he wanted to go and yell at somebody to clean them up. And I said, no, 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 Ralph. It'll be an even bigger event if you wait a couple of weeks till they really pile up. Then you're going to have a huge fight with the Bagdasarian's. So he said, that's a great idea, Johnny. And... Two weeks later, it happened, and the Bagdasarians came in and saw their own dogs, turds, all over the floor, freaked out. Why didn't you tell us? We would have came in and cleaned it up, and then a huge fight ensued, and we saw the turds flying out the doorway and stuff like that. Everyone was ducking for cover. It was great. And the way we pitched it to Ralph was Bob Jakes and I went to lunch one day, and on the way back, we were, we were recalling all these funny stories about working next door to the Bagdasarians on the Chipmunk Adventure, and we started coming up with the idea for this story. Wouldn't it be great if, uh, you know, Mighty Mouse meets... Alvin and the Chipmunks, and we explain why there's a human that forces these, you know, tiny rodents to sing and uh, and wear human clothes and stuff. So we were laughing our heads off in the car. We almost had an accident. We came back from lunch, and we went into Ralph's office, and we pitched it to him, thinking that he would tell us, you know, forget it. You know, we can't do this. And he went for it. He just went, he started laughing his head off. He fell out of his seat, and he goes, John, do it. Do this thing. So we just went went ahead and made it. No, 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 boys. Remember, this is a romantic ballad. So speed it up. Why don't we take a break, Sandy? Well, I don't know, boys. We've got a big night ahead of us. Look, guys, it's my old top uh, This guy here, Sandy Bottom Feeder, that's the David Seville character. He's based on Nate Canfer, one of the uh, CalArts artists that we hired to work on the show. And... uh, there he is, Sandy Bottom Feeder. He had unique ears. Those ears really looked like that. He had upside down ears, yeah. Yeah, and one of them was higher than the other. He was all kind of lopsided, which is why we called him Sandy Bottom Feeder. Hey, is that nice? Ah, that's okay. I get that stuff from the boys all the time. The boys! Hey, you'll want to meet them. Hey, Elwi. Elwi? That's a great drawing there. John did probably 
I don't know what percentage of key drawings, but you had a lot of a lot of layouts in this one. This is an Istvan drawing. Mm -hmm. Istvan was this uh, Hungarian guy. Majoros, yeah. Uh, Istvan came in one day. We were looking for people, and he came in with his portfolio from Filmation. And the shows that he had been working on were things like Flash Gordon, uh, realistic stuff, Black Star. He had this portfolio full of really dry, like super serious looking drawings, right? And he was wearing a suit and yes. a bow tie and stuff. And, and 90, asked, 90 asked, degree heat. In 90 degree heat, he'd yeah. wear a suit, no matter what the weather. So he showed me his he showed, showed me his portfolio, and I said, "Well, listen, Istvan, this is a really cartoony show." And it, and I gave him a bunch of Jim Tyre model sheets. Jim Tyre was one of the original Terry Toons animators who drew really crazy. And I gave those to him and told him to, to go back and if he if he wanted to apply for the show, try coming up with some wacky poses like Jim Tyre. And I thought we'd never see him again. He came back the very next day with... Oh, there was Mashy the Pup. Yeah, this is Tiger Lily. Hi, kids, I'm Mashy the Pup. You won't believe today's incredible story. Sandy Bottom Feeder was a young man. Here's some poses that uh, Bruce Tim and I did. This is a bit that's cut here. It leads up to it, and they cut the thing out. Yeah, originally there was a baby's hand sticking out of the, mm. the dirt. This was the pathos scene. Yeah, I can't believe we got away with this stuff here. I, only Ralph could have. Well, there are two things you got away with. You got away with this. that, and then this pose here in a minute. Not this That's one. That's amazing. Let's go home, my loved ones. I'll but he's praying. I mean, you don't, you don't, never, you can't go near there. No, they won't let you do it, but they did it. It's on the air. Yeah. Figure that out. Oh, here you have the Ohurids box. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, Ohurids. Ohurids. That's another long story. I don't think I can tell it in there. But boys. It's a free Ralph mask, it says in the corner there. Anything you say, man, just take it easy. Keep cool, man. I want you to. Win. Isn't that, is it Patrick Penny who's doing the voice of Sandy Bottom Feeder? Um. Let me see. Bo Weaver. It's Bo Weaver. It's Bo Weaver? Yeah. <laughs> this is the softer version, which makes it even kind of weirder. Anything, man. Oh, anything. I want you to sing. La, 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 la. And I want you to sing really fast. La, 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 la. Anyways, I was talking about Istvan. And this van came in the next day with the weirdest Distortions. Doggone, drawings, doggone drawings you've ever seen of Mighty Mouse and, and uh, Heckle and Jackal and all these Terry Tunes characters. They were so bizarre, they made Jim Tyre look normal. And, when, and so I, I ran into Ralph's office to show them to him. And Ralph thought they were great and hired this fan on the spot. And he would hand in the weirdest, weirdest scenes you ever saw. So weird that even I, like, wanted to change them and stuff, but we wouldn't have time to change them. Hey. And soon the success of <laughs> And so I gave him the weirdest character in in this uh, cartoon. He did a lot of the Sandy Bottom Feeder scenes. Now, he did this. This is an Istvan scene. Istvan was not af afraid of drawing 10,000 characters in a scene. No. This this whole section here is Istvan. There's some great drawings. Look at this stuff. Mm. This is just like only somebody from another land could draw like this. <laughs> Look at these characters. Istvan brought in this pile of drawings, and they were so bizarre to me at the time. I'm used to them now. Now they look normal to me. That I had so much work to do that I just stared at the drawings, and I looked really sad because I thought I'd have to redraw them all, and Istvan realized it. So the next day, I saw Istvan in Ralph's office with Tom Klein, the producer, and Istvan had his head hung low. He was still wearing his bow tie and his suit, and he was looking really sad, and all of a sudden I heard Ralph scream at him, and Istvan came running out of the office, and he came into my office. Well, and I said, Istvan, what's wrong? How come Ralph's screaming at you? And Istvan says, Mr. Ralph, I asked Mr. Ralph to fire me because I have let you down. I, I said, what? You don't want to be fired. I mean, we use all that stuff. It's all great stuff. It just kind of shocked me when I first looked at it. But anyways, he asked me to go in on his behalf and get him fired. So I went, <laughs> I went into Ralph's office afterwards. I said, what, Ralph, what the, what the hell happened? Ralph says, yeah, his, his fan came in, he, he wanted me to fire him. He wouldn't go, he wouldn't leave the office because I kept refusing. So finally, the only way I could get him out was I told him, uh, Isfan, if you don't leave right now, I'm going to hire you for the next five years. And his fan, that's when his fan ran out and came into my office. Oh, his desk. His fan's desk was amazing. Mm. He had a whole color-coded system. His layouts would be oh, drawn in 50 colors. That's right. And he had all his, all his pencils taped to his desk 
in order of the rainbow or something. And he had like some kind of system down. I, I, we, none of us could ever figure it out. And one time we went into his office early in the morning before he came in and we rearranged everything. We thought he was gonna murder us, right? Cause you don't know what these Hungarians are gonna do. And he walked in and everybody was sitting at their desk looking over at him. And he just gently peeled the tape off his chair and sat down and he kind of looked around, but then he just went right back to work and he never even reacted to it. We didn't even get murdered or anything. I had some bizarre obsessions back in these days. I had an obsession with Kirk Douglas, and I had an obsession with Relish. So oh, I, yeah. I would put Relish jokes into everything. So there's a scene where he's supposed to be, Mighty Mouse is supposed to be bringing parents back to the orphans of Mouseville. Instead, he brings them Relish. Kent Holiday uh, wrote and performed this song here, the Twitch and Writhe song. Mm -hmm. oh, you're poor, poor kids. Ken also did our track readings and stuff like that, but he was mm -hmm. a good musician. Yeah. And uh, it was really funny, too. He had been an assistant animator for blues, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. Before that. He's kind of one of those all-round yeah. talented guys. Okay, here's where he reveals that he brought parents. Yeah. Mighty Mouse brought all these parents to Is take it? care of... Uh, oh, they, we had to change a bunch of lines. Oh, had, yeah, yeah, legally, I think. Sandy yeah. Bottom Feeder said, Mighty Mouse is going to... Uh, Bring you new, buy you new parents. That's that what it was. was it. Who did these drawings that are coming up? This. Who did this? this, this that's got to be Ed Bell. It's very good. It's it's, it's like a it's different very Disney esque. Level. Very Disney esque, but it's interesting. Nobody else could do that. Yeah, so there were some scenes right after this where the animals drag the uh, the mice to the caves. Oh yeah. To their caves and their burrows and stuff, and that's, they toss them in. Was, that's right. There's a giant bumblebee that drags one of them to his, to his Volkswagen and tosses him in. Yeah, on top of a car or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now here's the. This is a. Uh, oh, this is good. This great boys. It just goes to show. Scene. It's not the species. It hints at something darker, which is. Uh, so there was no pathos in the original Chipmunks, but in the '80s Chipmunks there oh, was. Luck. So this was making fun of that. This is the dog again. And that's the now there was an there was an ending to this that didn't make it into the cartoon, and I'm hoping we can uh, actually cut it back into here. Please, before crossing the street. Got to end with a moral. Yep. That and music. laughing, of course. And that music is from the Bag Mouse, and reuse. I'm listening to this nice sound effect with the Cheerio here. 